I'm here again today with Bonnie Specker, who's going to give us a COVID-19 situation update from across the world, the United States, our region, and our state. And also today, she's going to just talk about um, some some things that we've been talking about. You know, the Delta spread. Um, you know, Delta's obviously here in South Dakota, and just what that means to our state. And then also, um, there's a, a chart, I believe, that you found that they asked experts, medical experts, what they would do now that the Delta variant is going throughout the country. Um, and you're going to talk about that a little bit today. Is that correct? That's it. Yeah. And we'll start off with that one. Um, okay. This is coming out of Stat News, and I have the link there so people can look at the original article. But they asked um, 27 infectious disease experts from across the United States what they are willing to do. And this is a summary of the results of those questions. Uh, the first one that was a pretty much unanimous no across all the experts was sending their unvaccinated child to school without a mask. So no one agreed with that. Um, sending your vaccinated teen to school without a mask, the, the majority of them said no. And that's pretty much what they're recommending because we are finding that this Delta variant, even though you're vaccinated, you can still spread it. So vaccinated people wearing a mask will protect other people that are not vaccinated. Um, going to a movie theater to see a fi film, people still aren't comfortable with that, especially with this Delta variant going around. Same with um, eating indoors in a restaurant. And then it goes on down. The one thing, you know, and the article kind of mentions this, sort of trying to add a little humor, people really don't want to give up their hairdresser or barber shop. Um, that happened a lot during the original peak. And I think people are willing to take a risk to get their hair cut. So, and then it was also interesting that a little bit more than half of these experts recommended that patients who received that Johnson and Johnson vaccine get another dose just for an extra boost for that Delta variant. So it was, I thought it was interesting to see what the experts would be willing to do. And last week we had talked a lot about the different definitions being used for community transmission. And I had shown what the Department of Health was using um, and what the CDC was using. And it was funny because that video was made on Wednesday and later that afternoon or Thursday, later that afternoon, the, C the Department of Health actually had a webinar and notified the state or the people watching this that they would be um, switching over to the CDC recommendations. And so the Department of Health, the dashboard that's currently being posted does use these new CDC recommendations that I had talked about last week. And the biggest difference is instead of just using total new cases per 100,000 over the past week, that's what was used pat in the past, they've added the test positivity. of And so those, the graphs that I'm providing, you know, that's up on the city website, those now have the cutoffs for both the new cases per 100,000, as well as test positivity. So it shows these different levels of transmission cutoffs for both Brookings and um, South Dakota. And the, the one thing that's a little bit different is that the Department of Health is listing the map that they provide on the dashboard that gives the level of community transmission they are only updating that once a week on Monday. The CDC is actually updating this every weekday. And the website that you can go to is down here at the bottom. And this gives the different level of spread for the counties throughout the whole US. But in this example, I've just focused in on South Dakota. And here we have, this was what three or four weeks ago, there were very few red um, counties. 
Now, the red is high transmission, the orange is substantial, yellow is moderate, and the blue is yellow, I mean, I'm sorry, blue. And you can see that back the end of July, Brookings County was in moderate spread. And the CDC is recommending that any county with substantial or high community transmission, that masking should be done while indoors because there is such a high level of transmission. You, you can see that by August 9th, Brookings had moved into substantial community spread and now we're at high community spread. So, and it's not just Brookings, it's the state as a whole has really moved rather quickly from being, you know, a lot of counties where there's low to moderate spread to almost all the counties being high and substantial spread. I think as of today, there's only maybe five or six counties that are low and moderate spread within the entire state. So this map is now even redder than it was just a day or two ago. As far as what's going on, oh, and one of the other things that the state recommends or has changed is that they're updating their dashboard every day rather than just once a week. And they will do that when the state is in substantial or high spread because they realize the importance of people you know watching what's happening and paying attention um so that was good to see i will not personally be updating these slides more than once a week just because it's i need my mental health and it's it stresses me out to watch these numbers increase um, so rapidly, but people can go to the dashboard if they want to see what how many new cases there are each day. Um, here we have Brookings. We're in a high, as I said, a high level of community spread. We have about the same number of cases this week as last week in the 40s. That is considered high. Here are the new cutoffs. And just so that people see the age distribution, and this data is given in more detail on the, the slides, um, since the end of July, 19% of these new cases have been in um, people less than 20 years of age. 46% of them have been in the 20 to 39 year age group. These two age groups have low vaccination rates, which is why we're probably seeing quite a few in those. 18% in the 40 to 59 year age group and 17% in those 60 years and older. This is actually the group with the highest vaccination rate. So you can see that we're starting to go into um, a high number of cases. Here we have the percent test positivity. I did switch this graph to be consistent with what the Department of Health and the CDC is using as a denominator for test positivity, and that is the PCR tests. Uh, and here you can see that Brookings is now in high spread based on test positivity. Test positivity is good to pay attention to because what it's telling you is even though our cases are going up somewhat, there are a lot more cases out there that are going undetected, um, that only really the sicker cases are, are showing up. So, and now that the CDC is using those two different things, the number of new cases and the test positivity, they're basing community spread on whichever one of those is the highest, okay? So if we were in moderate spread here, but in high spread based on cases, they would say we were in high spread. So as far as um, hospitalizations, I thought I'd add this this week because we have in the last week had five new hospital admissions for Brookings County residents. This is a pretty big increase, especially given that we've only had 50 new cases. That's about 10% of the cases have been hospitalized. 
um, deaths. We haven't seen any of those. And just a reminder that the hospitalization and death data are kind of lagging behind. It takes a while to ensure that we're getting all of those put on the dashboard. And I wanted to show this. This is the spread for those 10 counties with the 10 most populous um, cities. Brookings last week was really going up. And this week it has tapered just a little bit. And we are, as I keep saying, in high spread. The interesting thing here is we have this quite a large increase in Lawrence and Pennington counties. These are the two counties that I've mentioned in the past having the lowest vaccination rate and the highest percent susceptible among their population. And last week, uh, Monument Health had nine people hospitalized with COVID. Three of them were in the ICU. This Wednesday, there were 34 of them hospitalized, 11 of them in the ICU. So things have changed quite rapidly in Rapid City. I think Monument Health, I saw somewhere that there's only two ICU beds left. So a lot of the people from West River who need, are going to be needing intensive care will probably be sent to, I would imagine would be sent to um, Sioux Falls. But so things are getting bad um, out there. If you look at the state, <clears throat> The state is in high spread as well. We had 862 cases last week. We have 1,242 um, this week. So we're still seeing that increasing exponential increase um, that started earlier this month. If you look at test positivity, this has increased for the state. We're up to 13%. Again, indicating that there's a lot of cases out there that are not being found. This, this particular slide I think is, is quite worrisome to me. Um, last week we had hospitalized seven new admissions, or this is the number in the hospital. 75 of them last Wednesday, 105 this Wednesday. 13 last week were in the ICU. This has increased to 35 in the ICU. Um, people need to realize that, okay, they're hospitalized, maybe they'll get better, but think of the strain that this is putting on our healthcare workers who are still kind of reeling from what happened last year. And now all of a sudden we were getting this big increase. I mean, we need to be cognizant of their well being as well. Um, the hospital admissions 45 this last week, 58 this week. And if you look at the distrib distribution of the admissions this past week, five of these 58, you know, a little less than 10% were pediatric cases. Six of them were in the 20 to 39 year age group, 20 of them in the 40 to 59 age group, and 27 were 60 years and older. So we're seeing younger cases in this peak or in this um, wave than we did back here in November. And here it's also interesting to note the number that are in the ICU. I mean, the last time we saw this number was back here in February. And at that time we had at least twice as many um, new admissions per week as we have now. So we're seeing more or sicker people that are, are being hospitalized. As far as the number of deaths, those are still down. Um, although there were five this past week, one of them was in the 20 to 29 year age group, one in the 40 to 49 year age group, and three of them in the 80 plus. If you look at the United States, We've had a million cases this past week compared to 843,000 the week before. So we're seeing this large increase. A lot of this is being driven by the South where um, Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, Texas, they're having a, a very steep increase in the COVID cases due to that Delta variant. Um, 
we're still lower as far as the, the increase. You know, Texas is now seeing more hospitalizations and cases than they saw during this peak. So we, we're not there yet, but we are looking like we're heading in that direction. The number of deaths have also increased um, or are increasing. Last week, we had a little over 4,000 deaths. Um, this week, we had 5,431 deaths. If you look at worldwide, 209 million cases, um, 4.6 million this past week compared to close to 4.5 million the week before. So we're seeing this increase continuing. Um, the number of deaths actually were, was pretty flat this the last two weeks at around 67,000 deaths. Um, one thing about the cases and the deaths globally is that Africa has, for some reason, there has been a delay since for the last um, five days in getting reporting out of Africa. So these numbers are likely to really go up quite a bit once we get the backlog from Africa added into these data. So that's pretty much the update for this week. It's not looking very good. Um, all national and international public health agencies are recommending these non-pharmaceutical interventions as well as vaccines to control this increased spread, the masking indoors, socially distancing, avoiding crowds and poorly ventilated spaces. And um, just a reminder, this also includes, you know, good air filtration of those spaces that are ventilated. So it's important to get um, vaccinated and prevent the spread. And yesterday, just to add a note, yesterday the recommendations are coming out that people should get a third booster eight months after their um, last boost, their, la their second vaccine. And that's because they think that there is some waning of the effect with this Delta variant and they just wanna make sure people are better protected. And maybe we can talk about that next week, um, the whole issue of the third vaccine. Absolutely, I think that would be a wonderful topic, Bonnie. And for those of you out there that are interested in getting your vaccination, there is a link in the description of this video uh, that you can go to and see where you can get a vaccination here in the Brookings area. And also, just remember those numbers are going out up. Continue to think about those healthcare workers. And if you see somebody, if it's your neighbor, or your friend, uh, that is a healthcare worker that works in one of the health systems, you know, just reach out to them, ask them how they're doing, make sure they're okay, and say thank you, because I think that they, they really appreciate it, and they've been through a lot um, over this COVID situation, and the numbers are going up. So uh, just remember to, to continue to think about them. Have a great week.